Thor Odinson here again. Little update, some things have changed, not particularly for the better. My girlfriend and I are no longer together. Don't want to talk about that. My hammer broke, so I picked up this beauty. I miss my hammer. And I now have an adopted daughter. Isn't she lovely? Well, her father was kind of an ass, so hopefully genetics don't pass through. But as it's looking, something's obviously wrong with her. Well, anyway, to keep her occupied, I bring along her toys. I tow them behind the chariot, and it's been kicking up a lot of rocks from the Bifrost. Heimdall doesn't clean it. So I've ordered a set of bro flaps for the rear with the extensions, and we're going to go over that install today. Hey, hey, wake up. What's wrong with you? Here's what comes with the rear mud flap setup. You have your upper pieces, your lower extensions. Again, if you've watched the other video, you'll be familiar. The metal rail is put on top of the extensions and you're gonna have your hardware here that screws in to these spots. Got a couple of ZZ Top brackets here. Uh, I guess if you're part of the ZZ Top ranch, you could brand yourself with those. Uh, but those are going to space these mud flaps out for us. They're going to hook in here. We've got some hardware here with a nylon lock nut. So these will take care of uh, any vibration so they won't come out. Uh, only difference is in the front. So you got your holes drilled in a couple other places. And that's pretty much it. You're going to get some instructions here on a piece of paper. We will not need those. You will not need those because I plan to provide you with adequate instructions via this video. Well, let's go and get on with the installation. All right, step one, we're gonna remove our little baby mud flap, our little winglet, this little guy right here. You can use a 10 millimeter or a 3 8 whatever you prefer. If you want to be imperial or metric, that's up to you. And this is also an optional, an optional thing to reuse here. All right. It looks like those, yeah, those just basically are uh, sheet metal type screws that go right into the bumper. They're just threaded into plastic, so we want to be careful when we put those back in. The other thing we want to remove here is this right here, this bottom one, I believe. Now, to remove that, we're going to use a 15 millimeter. And we're going to place one side of our Z-bar brace. There, we're going to reuse this factory bolt. So here's our Z brace. And the factory bolt already has a washer on it. Good, good. So we're going to snug that up a little bit. That way we can rotate this around because I want to make sure we get the quick, the correct, the correct orientation. So it lines up with the hole right here. So let's go ahead and put this up here. And we're gonna line that up with these holes. Like I said, let's be very careful not to strip these out since they are only into the factory bumper there, plastic. Okay. Okay, I'm going to snug those up a little bit more, but not all the way tight. I just want to get them so they're not quite as loose so I can line up the Z-bar over there 
and know that it's pretty much in a stationary spot. All right, when we go to install the other side here for the Z brace, you're gonna see your fender liner. If it comes down right here to this point, either start off with your mud flap behind that or, or just push it behind it. You want this to go behind that. Now for the hardware, remember we use the factory bolt that's gonna hold the Z brace in on the bumper. Uh, on this other end, you, you had, remember your, your button head Allen screw and your nylon lock nut. So I'm just gonna use a washer on each side of this. I'm not gonna use, I'm not gonna use this because with the uh, nylon lock nut, there's just no need. It's gonna, it's gonna hold it on there just fine. So I'm gonna go behind here and see if I can line that up. So use your screw, one washer, put that through the front and then come around the back and you wanna rotate your Z brace around till you can get that lined up. Okay, and I've got it through the Z brace hole and I'm gonna get the nut started on there. And it would help if I had the fingers of a Barbie doll. All right, next step, go ahead and tighten these up. Use a really loose grip when you're when you're tightening these up, or use a uh, smaller handheld wrench just to make sure you don't strip these out. And then next, we're going to go down here and we're going to tighten up these two. That you're 15 going into the bumper, and then this other button head here. Here we are on the back side. We're going to try and get a better view of the Z brace here, and. Gonna grab your Allen wrench and I would suggest either use the open end or closed end of a 7 16th here. Just put that over the nut and then just go ahead and tighten it up with your Allen wrench. And remember you want your washers on both sides of this. And there we go. Simple as that. Grab your 15 mil and your wrench. And then we're gonna tighten up our other bottom bolt that we reused here. End of the bumper. Nice and tight. And this mud flap's not going anywhere. Next, we're gonna put the extension on this. Now, I suppose you could put this on on the outside or the inside. And your only difference here is gonna be, if it's on the inside like this, it might look a little cleaner because you'll only have your screws. Whereas on this side, you're gonna have four of these and you'll also have an, an, an ledge back here, a ledge for lack of better words. But with this rail here on the inside like that, it's gonna give you a little bit of a spot where you're gonna be catching debris so if you're in the snow or anything like that, it's gonna, it's gonna stack up on top of that. So really the best performance would be in the back here. And that way you're, everything's just gonna come and slide off. You're not gonna get any buildup on this top edge. So if you've already watched the other video on the fronts, you've seen then how to uh, install these. And you're just gonna line it up here. I like to do the middle one first, that way you then can swivel this and line it up for the others and get them all started um, by your finger first and then after that you're going to use your Allen wrench. So if I was going to keep these on here permanently, then the most noticeable thing that I would take care of is these washers here. Since you still see these, they're, they're silver, they're gonna stand out. If I was gonna keep these on here permanently or most of the year, what I would do is invest in a few black washers, because you definitely want, you want some washers here so that these bolt holes don't wear, these bolts don't wear through the holes or when you tighten them down, they start squeezing into the holes on the flap. 
I would get those black washers, replace these with those, and then I would use just a dab of Loctite. I would do medium Loctite on each one of these screws, and there you go. They'd be a nice clean install. You wouldn't see the uh, silver retainers there. Here's a look with it mounted on the outside. I don't have to worry about buildup of snow. And I'm not really too worried about any little pebbles or anything sticking up in there. So I'm going to flip that around to the inside and we'll have a look and see what it looks like then. Here's the extension mounted inside. I think this gives you the cleanest look and this is how I have the front extension mounted. So like I said, I think if you were to just get some black washers and use a little bit of Loctite on those bolts, it would look really good and solve the problem of it possibly backing out later on. Um, you know, and that's, it's easily removable. I mean, you could just do that no matter what. This is also, remember I said, you've got your little winglet that went right here. That's without it put back on. And we'll get a better view of this outside, but you can see it lines up exact with the Sasquatch fender coming down. And they have this kit for the non-Sasquatch, I believe, and then the other different types of bumpers for the rear. Uh, I have a base model, so it fits, if it's the base and then a few others, and then they have a different setup for the other bumper types. Yeah! -ha! Get a look at the mud flap here in the rear now installed. You can see all my beautiful fingerprints everywhere from the dust collecting on it. A lot more protection now. And I'm going to say if you do any towing, if you have anything back there that you don't want all dinged up and have a rock thrown on, then it might be worth getting a set of these especially with the extensions, then you can just pull them off whenever you want. So if you're, if you're towing or if you have any uh, bad winters or you're just driving on rocks all the time, these will protect people from behind you, broken windshields. And uh, who wants to be that guy by breaking people's windshields all the time when you pull out on the road if you're coming off of a gravel road? So I think these look great. Fitment on these was uh, spot on, really easy install. They line up really well, as you can see, straight down from the Sasquatch. So, pretty happy with these. If this video helped you out, please give it a thumbs up, a like, and subscribe if you want to see some more videos. I'll be putting them out as often as I can. Cheers. Hey Clint, now that we've finished Handmaid's Tale, how about a Bro Flaps installation video?